Hey, here we go with another big stage presentation for GLOW. We're so excited about this one. It's creating a truly global, global classroom by Shared Studios with Amar leading us today, Amar Bakshi. So we're going to hear everything he has to share with us. He's going to have a lot of interaction with you today. So we're super excited. Uh, these are our sponsors. Once again, thank you, thank you, thank you, partners and sponsors for all that you've done to make this conference possible. Uh, without you, we couldn't do it. Please be sure to visit the booths in the Hop In Expo tab. You can read through these and see the different sponsors we have. You can visit the, tab, the Expo Lounge and see their materials. They have some awesome resources in there for you. Sometimes they're in there chatting with you. Most of the time they're not. So still go in and see what they have available for you when you have time between sessions. Also, if you're using social media, which we hope you are, if we still have Twitter and things like that, then use GLOWEDU as a hashtag or GlobalEd22 is your hashtag. And then now this is being recorded, so everything will be preserved later. You will be able to see the keynote and the main stage presentations in YouTube. And then the other sessions will also be shared until January 31st. They'll be free, and after that, there'll be a fee for them. So be sure and watch the ones you haven't been able to see because we can't be everywhere at once. And there's so many great ones. And I'm going to let uh, Amar take it away. So go. All right. Thank you so much, Julian. Thank you to Bill and Lucy and the whole uh, GLOW team for inviting me. I feel very honored to be among so many of you. I am not an education uh, specialist at all. So uh, it's been wonderful to learn from so many of you. Um, and I'm going to tell you about uh, a project I've been working on now for some years. Uh, and the way I'm going to break it down is first tell you a bit about its origin. Then I'm going to tell you what it is uh, and then talk about how we're deploying an education. And that'll take about 20 minutes. And then I was going to open to Q&A and hopefully we can have a chat. Uh, if no one has any questions, I'll keep blathering and I'll tell you more about the story and what we do. Um, so let me just begin with a story, which is, uh, when I graduated from college in 2006, I got a dream job. I traveled around the world as a reporter, a video blogger, interviewing people from all walks of life, from Mexico to India to Pakistan to Philippines. And while reporting over the course of three years, I found that the most meaningful conversations I had were on long bus rides in the evening when back then I don't think there was Netflix or the iPhone, or at least I didn't have one. And so just to pass the time out of boredom, I spoke to the person next to me. And in those kind of twilight hours where I didn't know them or their context and they didn't know me, I had some of the most meaningful conversations of my life. Moments where I lost myself in the world. I recognized how small I was and how vast it was. And I really bonded with people talking about matters that I might not have even said anything about at home. So when I came back to the US after these years abroad in 2009, uh, I found that I never had those kinds of conversations. I was interacting to get a job or get a date. It was always for a purpose. And at the bus stop or on the train, I was looking at my phone. I had lost that feeling of being lost in the world. And that stuck with me. And the second experience I had that was formative was I, uh, while traveling, was in Pakistan. And my grandmother was living in Columbia, Maryland, and she had fled Pakistan during partition. And she had fled 60 years before. And she desperately wanted to reconnect with her home community. And I told her not to worry because one day technology would be so good that she could walk around as a hologram and connect to whoever she wanted. And so she passed away some years later. And even though the technology was getting better and better and better, there was no context in which she could have engaged someone uh, Oops, are we? Oh, she could have engaged someone uh, in a, a conversation that would have really satiated her soul. And I thought, what would she want? She'd want to walk into her neighborhood Starbucks in Columbia, Maryland, and share a chai with someone around the world, as if in the same room. And so back in 2015, I launched something called Portals. And Portals are gold structures that are positioned in public sites and private around the world. And when you enter, you come face to face with someone in an identical structure somewhere else on earth. And you can interact live and full body, making eye contact and the technology and the screen really fade away. 
And because you're walking out of your daily routine into this special environment, uh, it's like entering a museum or a library where you lower your voices. Something changes in you and people have incredibly deep conversations in the space. Now, portals take many forms. We've been around for seven years. We've expanded to 50 sites around the world and built a global team. Uh, hi, Jolene. Is, is it, are we running okay? I know someone asked if we are live. Hi, Bill. Oops. I'll keep going until I'm told to, everything to stop. Is, everything oh, okay. is, is a Okay, okay, oh, good, so good, good, good. All right, great. Okay, sorry, everyone. So um, so portals uh, are uh, the gold cost structures, but they're also in inflatables. Here you see them in the Andover Public School District, which has had inflatables roving around. Um, they're also rooms. So you can take a wall and turn it into a, uh, a portal. And so this is for classrooms or, or ordinary uh, setups. And we even do screens. You know, we have very many different forms of it. And here we have President Obama engaging with social entrepreneurs uh, around the world through portals. So I launched this in 2015 between a gallery in Tehran and a gallery in New York, this art project where people entered into a gold shipping container and they had a conversation with a stranger about what would make today a good day for you, a stranger across the world. And I thought that this would be a compelling experience for people, but I was surprised by how uh, impactful it was. People came out giddy and weeping. They brought their grandparents and their relatives and word started to spread. And one of the first people who reached out to us was a young computer science professor in Herat, Afghanistan, who wanted to share. Uh, he said, you know, when people think about us, they don't realize the full richness of our society. I want to showcase Herat to the world and learn from the world. And so we gave him instructions and he set up a portal at a university in Herat, Afghanistan, using local technology assembled according to our guidelines. And the network began to grow. So public parks, educational institutions, museums, entrepreneurship hubs. And over the past seven years now, we've connected more than half a million people in conversation uh, across the globe and set up portals um, in you know, over 100 sites, but about 50 are long term. And, uh, and that's, that's, uh, this is what portals uh, you know, looks like. So we have them in Adelaide, Australia, in San Francisco. Uh, we had it in Times Square. In Iraq, it's in an old IDP camp, in a refugee camp that they took an old gas station and painted it gold and connect through it. Um, Honduras, Lesbos, Greece. So these are some of the different locations where portals exist. And I'm actually going to show a quick video because I think that'll help kind of make the vision clear. And then I'll talk about its, its use in education. These are just a few more uh, video uh, images. Um, one in Nakavala, Uganda, in a bottle brick house, also in a refugee camp. Um, and then, of course, in a number of schools and public parks. This is in Richmond. So before I move on, Bill, can you play the overview video? It's about three minutes long. It's actually an old video from 2017, but it gives you a sense of the motivating ethos that I was just describing. Portals is about really curating the diversity of the world and bringing the benefits of that diversity to people from all walks of life. I'm Amar Bakshi. I'm the founder and creator of Shared Studios. We take shipping containers, we paint them gold, and we equip them with immersive audio-visual technology. We're in a world where people are retreating into their own little bubbles. They see and hear things that are given to them, but don't often get the chance to talk to someone halfway around the world or talk to someone who they hear about all the time. Through portals, you can connect with people that you're separated from due to distance and really learn about their realities in a very simple way, through a simple conversation. We have 30 portals around the world and every portal connects to every other portal in the network. When you enter one, you come face to face with someone in an identical portal somewhere else on earth and can converse live, full body, as if in the same room. When people come in, they often describe feeling as though they're breathing the same air. Kids think they can walk up through the wall and hug the person on the other end. Being in the Portal Project has kind of changed my life. I think it's just starting world peace. It's as diverse as our sites are. From a refugee camp in Erbil, Iraq. It gave us a lot of information about how's the life, how's the situation. To a, a tech hub in Gaza City, Palestine. 
God, we're gonna eat. To a modern art museum in Mexico City. No matter how far away we are, we can still be brothers and sisters. Our portal in Kigali, Rwanda, is at a community art space. I think this is an awesome opportunity to connect Rwanda to the rest of the world. And we just launched a portal in Times Square. And every day, we have everything from strangers talking about daily life, to ongoing classes, to global performances, dance-offs, rap albums, and to sharing entrepreneurial ideas. We could bend the spaces and create this wonderful experience uh, to connect to people in different parts of the world. We had President Obama come and speak to social entrepreneurs in South Korea, Iraq, the UK, and Mexico. It's an amazing technology, making it seem like you're standing right in front of me. We've now had 75,000 people come through and have these conversations. And they all talk about how powerful it is to focus your attention on hearing the stories of someone else. We want this to happen all over the world for everybody. Any location can really be a portal as long as it has internet and a source of electricity. No matter where you are, who you are, we want to hear from you and we want to work with you to put a portal in your community because with every new site, we grow more diverse, more dynamic, and ever more valuable together. Okay, great. Thank you for showing the video. Um, I was much younger back then. That is five years ago, but we are still at it. Um, okay, so I'll tell you, thank you for the questions and the comments in the, in the thread. I'm going to turn to those in a second. Um, I'll just tell you a few other components of portals. So um, portals are run by local staff, like local curators. And so you met some of them in Gaza and Erbil. And these are people who the host institution, if it's a school or a museum, who are they are assigned to kind of be the curator for the portal, sort of like the librarian or the teacher. These people's role is to help encourage you to overcome the barriers to that form of engagement, right? There's anxiety. What am I going to say? And you, you need someone, just like a teacher needs to coach a young person to learn to love knowledge, or a curator needs to learn to to teach people to learn to love beauty, we think the same thing has to happen to teach young people and really everyone how to embrace human difference, how to see it as a source of strength and joy and not something to fear. And so our curators uh, are, are trained by us and we have a method we've been working on that uh, we think is really fruitful in facilitating these kinds of interactions through portals where of course the full body component is part of it but the other equally critical part of it is the community of people running the portals. And then we program through them conversations, design sprints, collaborations, meals. And I can show you a couple examples, but you really are turning this into a global community space, a global like town hall. And every site in the network connects to every other site. And we have a pretty robust calendar, as you might imagine, where on any given day, you know, two dozen sites are connecting to each other at different times on different topics like climate innovation or migration or, uh, you know, gender and tech. And these are all programs that we are driving or our partners are driving on their own. And I'll come to that, too. Um, at this point now, we have more than 10,000 pages of testimonials and someone actually wrote their dissertation on it uh, for, in, for a Ph.D., um, but one whole sector is from students and kids. And we've done some research on this as well around, um, you know, why and how this is such a unique and impactful experience. But, you know, 90 plus participants, plus participants um, are feeling, uh, you know, a, a fundamental shift in their assumptions about other people, which is really our goal. Uh, and to see, um, you know, to challenge them. And so uh, we can share some of them, but, uh, but it's, it's striking. And let me show you just a couple examples. Um, we have been working with the Andover Public School District for the past five years now um, with an inflatable portal that travels from school to school um, and basically does teacher trainings and, of course, classes. 
with students around the community. And so the school district brought it and then the schools take it for two, three weeks at a time. And our curator travels with it, which is one model. And we have programs on current affairs, on language, on music. Um, and here's a picture of some young kids in one school interacting with students in Gaza. And you know, the topic I don't remember, but I think it was around painting. Uh, and so the topics are all over the map. Um, we have done quite a bit of work at the university level as well with um, Harvard, Yale, Boston College, and Johns Hopkins in particular. And I can tell you more about some of that work with co-taught classes. So a poetry seminar, a music seminar, and there's a beautiful video, which um, I, can, I can show you as well. Um, musical collaborations up until the Taliban took control of um, uh, Afghanistan. We were doing a lot with the Na Afghan in uh, Institute of Music. Uh, which was a, a is a, a women's uh, run um, uh, orchestra uh, with collaborations. And we've done a good amount of work with the United Nations, with UNICEF, uh, UNDP, uh, with portals in various camps. And of course, this is where the training becomes very important. And we work closely with UNICEF to try to provide some social and emotional learning support through portals where, um, you know, we have young kids who've seen killing in Mosul and um, they come to the portal daily to meet friends. And this is something that we see all over the world where people uh, in communities, you know, in America, in our portal in Milwaukee, where people very rarely leave their zip code in a lifetime, let alone leave the country. And when suddenly you're able to talk about your concerns, your life uh, with counterparts around the world, it changes your politics, your view of the world. And to just give one example, in Milwaukee, our portal is in a community with the highest black male incarceration rate in America. And with the portal, local activists were connecting to activists in Rwanda and Afghanistan to talk about community justice and restorative justice mechanisms and basically instituted their own form of a gachasa court in Milwaukee based on the conversations they had in Rwanda. And this is the kind of lateral learning that um, can happen where you know, you're not sort of getting a, the, the UN's telling you how to promote peace, you're actually learning from people in similar but very different regions. And it also awakens a bit of a political consciousness saying, oh wow, you know, they're dealing with something similar in Mumbai as we are in Milwaukee or even in the different part of America. And this is actually, there's a paper, if you go to sharedstudios.com slash research, there's three or four papers from Yale researchers on exactly this effect through portals. Um, and then we've done a lot with cultural institutions. So portals generally connect site to site, but you can do some fun stuff. Like here, we connected with NASA to astronauts in Houston in a space capsule, and they were doing a series taking young women on tours of, of NASA through portals, um, all without headsets or anything. And the final thing is there's a PBS documentary out about portals, which I'll share in the thread. And it's, it's about 25 minutes, but it gives a really good sort of summary of our story and how it impacts young people. And it focuses on Richmond and kids in Richmond. So it's a, it's a really strong example of, um, of what we do. And I've been exactly 20 minutes. Wow. Okay, great. So, um, oh yeah, thank you for sharing the, um, thank you for sharing that. And I will also share the documentary. So you have it. Okay. So uh, I was going to pause here for a second and, um, and see whether there are certain regions I should weigh into more. Um, what I, there's a couple of videos that I think are, are compelling that I've queued up. One is a shared meal in a portal between, um, uh, oops, yes, we will check that. Um, the uh, a shared meal in um, between Kigali and New York, which is about two minutes, which I can share. And then I can talk a bit more about our work in education and how I think this group could be really helpful in bringing us to the next level. Um, so um, now I'm trying to think what the best next step is. Why don't I answer a couple questions that have come up in the chat Oh, hi, Don. <laughs> great. So it would be great to pull on Don. I don't know if it's easy to do that, but people who've actually done portals and used it in their schools, because it's a different perspective. But I'll tell you a little bit about where we are now as an organization and sort of how we've come through. So when COVID struck, all the portals shut down. 
And we started doing virtual conversations, which were very powerful. And I know CILC and others have presented and they're you know, spectacular in, in this work. What we did that was unique to our approach was we actually, we found similar kinds of people around the world tackling an issue. So young climate activists is the most, um, the, the biggest one where we had them come together in different parts of the world and talk about what youth climate activism looked like to them with student groups from other schools. And, it, and now you asked about the United Nations, we've launched a big partnership with the UN Live Museum where we're placing portals around the world to focus discussions on climate and climate activism. And the... Um, the, the, the focus of it, the, the, uh, the goal of it is to uh, have young people talking about what they're doing and what they can do to push for climate change, uh, to push for fight for climate where they are. And we had a portal at COP27, and then we, we are launching them from, you know, the Nile River to the Amazon to really, really interesting sites. During that time, we also really reduced the cost and complexity of setting up a portal. And so I can jump ahead maybe to, if I can pull the slides back, I might jump ahead to um, the putting it into action, or I can just tell you about it. So one is, of course, we would lo we love to bring portals to schools and school districts. And historically, we've done something where we've both placed the portal and programmed the portal. So we've connected it to all our sites, and it's been for anywhere from a day to a couple weeks. Uh, with a school and it's really like a global field trip brought to the school and we're continuing to do that but the second thing we're starting to play with is you know if we have a, a kit some instructions and we say these are the elements you need um, can we basically put it on schools to set this up um, to set this up to set up a uh, a portal in their environment and then programmatically can these schools collaborate with one another directly? Meaning we're less involved as shared studios in programming, but the two schools are programming together. We did some of this with Narrative 4 before the pandemic, and I actually spoke to them earlier today. It worked really well, and we want to take that to the next level. So, so bringing portals to the school, thinking about if there's a pair of schools or four schools that have some relationship where they might want to help us uh, pilot and test out, but can really drive the programming on their own. That's very, very valuable to us. And then the third is we're keen on doing, uh, you know, joint proposals to help out build out this kit to say, hey, here's what you do with your school to create this um, portal. And then here's the software platform to help you connect to other schools around the world to coordinate it. And then finally, here's some research or here's a research project we're going to embed on top of this to really see what's working, what's not, and how we can improve. And so those are three areas where we're really keen on having these conversations and seeing how we can get portals as affordable and ubiquitous as possible. Because I think if we don't, you know, there's a lot of emphasis now on, of course, metaverse and headsets and everything. And I'm sure there's an important place for all of that. But we think that there's a great value in creating a physical space that represents global connection and great value in not wearing anything, in making eye contact, in moving freely, and also having that kind of always on experience of being able to run into a study hall and be sitting with a kid in Cairo while you're sitting in, you know, uh, in Kansas. And that's the vision we have. Um, and we also, I'll show you, um, you know, we also think that this vision of what we're creating um, allows you to uh, connect, um, connect uh, to, to also enter into uh, live interactions and recorded interactions and see the world in a different way. Uh, and then, of course, we have different renderings of fun things we want to do, like a gold school bus traveling around. Um, okay, there's some some questions now. Um, so. Uh, is it possible a non-portal site? Cut? So it's absolutely possible for non-portal sites to join the conversations. I mean, there's so many, there are great groups that do purely the virtual conversations. And I see us as a, a, a good addendum or a addition to that work by creating these deeper connections between two sites where the students really feel like they're in the same place. 
if you join from a different environment, you can absolutely do it. You just don't have the same experience. And so what we're trying to do is say, well, you probably all already have a projector, probably already have a camera. Um, if you set it up in this way and run our software, we can manipulate it so that your projector and your camera can look pretty good. That's the direction we're trying to go. And then what we'd want to say is if you have the space and it's just a wall, you dedicate it to the portal and then you work with us to program it. Sorry. Um, what I might do uh, is, Bill, do you think, so if it makes sense, Bill, I think um, I could show you just one other sh a shared meal video, which um, gives a bit of a sense. Do you have a link? I think that's fine. You can do that. And there's also a question about, do you have a link for more information on district program? Yeah. So I I'll share um, our mm -hmm. K through 12. I should have prepared all the links beforehand so that I don't have to Google it. But if you send no that, if you do it there or you email me at Amara at Shared Studios, I'll oh. send you the district okay. program um, okay. and um, show you what we've done with Andover. And then because we're still early on this journey, and this is kind of the big point I guess I want to make is we've been working in so many different environments and education has been one of them. The next stage of our journey is the right kinds of partnerships to do this at a bigger scale with experts in the field of education. And so, um, we, you know, school districts are perfect for that if they want to help us go deep, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Amar, let me ask you a question for a school or a district. What are, for anyone, what type of technology on, on the hardware type of, and connectivity part do they have to yeah. have? So the, there are a lot of things that make us unique. One of them is we can run on very low bandwidth. You know, we, our, one of our first portals was on Cuba, in Cuba, where the internet was worse than you have on your cell phone, and we can make it work. Um, ideally, you want two or three megabits per second, but that's nothing. I mean, if you're watching me now, you probably have that. Um, in terms of the projectors, there are a bunch that work, and we can send you a list of the ones that work. And in terms of cameras, there are a bunch that work. And then we have instructions on how to assemble it, um, and then different options for the structure. We haven't really built the kit fully for schools. So it's not, we're kind of in this stage where um, we've done a lot of events for schools where we've come in and we've programmed everything and we've run it. And we haven't sort of invested and found the right mix of partners to go the step further, to have an IKEA kit that you can go online and order that then derives at the school with clear And they always have it, yeah. That's awesome. where we want, that's exactly where we want to go. And so we're That'd sort of awesome. looking, yeah, yeah, we're looking for partners or grants that can help us because it's not a huge lift, um, but it does, it will take some time and people who really understand how, you know, what a school looks like and what a club what student club might be able to do this, you know, what's reasonable. Um, yeah. But it's, but it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. And I, you know, what you said about people haven't been outside their zip code, that's truly an issue. The other issue too, is looking at um, underserved countries, you know, socioeconomic uh, de developing countries um, in far as like countries in Africa or even in these refugee camps and they don't have all a lot of bandwidth, but having the opportunity to do this would be amazing. Wow. Yeah. So, so one of the great stories through portals and there, there are a bunch, but one great one is we have a portal in Rwanda and Dogon Mondiant uh, uh, was our curator there. And he grew up stateless in a refugee camp, a Congolese refugee camp in Rwanda. He was in the portal and uh, you know, he met the CEO of AOL through a portal, right? And they hit it off. They maintained a relationship. The CEO gave him a full ride to NYU. And now uh, Dogon wrote a book. The book is published by Penguin. It's called Those Who We Throw Away Our Diamonds. Um, and it's doing very well. And he's start launching a new initiative to bring portals to similar kinds of camps. And what he will say is there's a huge social capital divide as well. And um, you know these human relationships, especially if we can get them at scale that are meaningful and that are cross-cutting, open up such incredible opportunity and possibility that right now are sort of locked away. And this is a big picture point, which is that the benefits of globalization often don't extend as broadly as we would like, even though Zoom is there and LinkedIn is there, and Facebook, because you need the human connection too. You need that introduction, that trust. It's not just automation. 
Yeah, I haven't planned to be on camera with all this light on me. But um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do have two more questions. And that's such a thing. It's like an economic um, yeah. inequity that prohibits some of this, uh, as well as a bandwidth inequity. But they all kind of go together. But Susie Voss wants to know, there's two about funding. That's why I'm jumping in with you. One is about okay, how sure. are you funding? Yeah. And then if you answer that, and I'll share the other one. Sure. So historically, we've been funded as a social impact business, meaning all revenue from clients. And so what's been tricky is we've had K through 12 clients, university clients, cultural institutions, public parks, and then and events and enterprises, all of them. And, you know, as you might imagine, the, the more sort of meaningful bulk of our revenue is coming from the events and enterprises. They just have more money. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's, but our mission is to connect people across distance and difference. And so education is really important to us. And it's, now a point where I'm wondering whether it makes sense to take what we've done and make it a nonprofit or break it out just to focus on K through 12 and figure out a way to, you know. But the other thing I'd say is that the, the raw costs are decreasing. So uh, to give a sense of historical budget and then budget where we are now. Uh, historically, any time a portal arrives anywhere, it's about $10,000. And then there's programming on top of that. And that can go anywhere from another $5,000 to $40,000 in a year to $50,000, $60,000. That's the kind of ballpark. Now, where we want to go, but we're not yet, is a tech kit where the school buys the hardware. We don't touch it. Maybe we can make some introductions. Maybe we can seek a grant together. But the core technology cost core is maybe $7,000. We can get it that low if you control the lighting and you do a lot of different things. Um, so then you would do that and we would have a subscription, which we'd price low and we have to figure out the right amount. And if you're connecting two schools, there's no cost from us, right? So it's, you can connect as much as you want. And so the vision there would be for, you know, one day for 2000 or $3,000, you can get a portal, you can connect to other schools, especially trusted schools at first. What we don't quite know how to crack, and I know so many people here have been working on this for decades, is how to have self-organizing groups of teachers around the world leveraging portals in a coherent way when everyone's so busy and so stretched and in a way that, um, you know, that works. And that's something we're trying to, to figure yeah, out. That's because that's you need to get volume. Part, you know? That's a great question. It's one we can maybe all investigate together because I love this. <laughs> I love that idea. So how do you develop that connection? I'm thinking of the old Skype in the classroom, the flip meetings, the live meetings, CILC, those kinds of things. So we have to organize in some way. I get that. So you answered Earl's question, wanted to know the minimal investment. Uh, and yeah. there's one more thing. Can you join the conversation at the same time with multiple connections from more than two portal boxes? Yes, you can. Um, in order to have it feel life-size and full body, you generally can't do more than three sites at a time total. Uh, you can, of course, have more people dialing in, listening, speaking. But to have the core experience with the size we have now, it's, it's that. There's a vision also of larger surfaces. Of course, they cost more. And in that case, you could have more sites as well. You could have more okay. sites as well. Yeah, everybody thinks this is amazing. I said it could be a great, and um, Susie Boss said it could be a great case study for business schools with a social enterprise focus. Um, yeah, and there's another thing in the chat you can look at. So were yeah, you wanting to up. share another video or something you'd said? Sure, or you I, thought, I thought we should, let's do the shared meals video. Um, okay. I think that'll give people a different, there are two ones. Sure. One is a shared meals video. The other one is, I would say, just show the first minute of the other one because it's long. The the hip hop, for the, uh, oh, is it even there? Oh, yeah. The, the one that is Portal Life. So that's from our portal in Milwaukee. Um, and it's just a video they made. So maybe, Julian, if you could just show the first minute of that okay. one. Okay. Uh, and then show the shared meals video. It gives two very different flavors. Now you let me know when I should like stop that one and I'll start the Amar, do you want the, do you want to show the meals one first? Yeah, let's yeah, do the meals one first. I'll run, that that one. I'll run them, no yeah. trouble. Got it, Perfect. I'll Thank remove you. myself.
Let's welcome everyone in the portal. The camera is there. <laughs> is that, that that's more? Yeah, that's more. Okay. <laughs> Can they see us? Hello. Yes, everybody. Hello. 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 My name is Piro. My name is Sammy. My name is Kabinjera. Most of the food that we eat in Rwanda, but they are fresh from the farm. So this is cassava, and then stew meat, sambusa, and chapati. We also have some sambusa here. I have a question. Uh, is it true that when it rains, everything stops? There is two things about Rwanda that you learn. People are not scared of cars, and people are scared of rain. <laughs> uh, like, what is your expectation when you come to Rwanda or to Africa? The, the genocide is the only thing that I saw on TV. Like, that's the only way the country is represented. We're having a normal life as people from USA. We go to work from Monday to Friday. We go to parties. For me, America is about diversity. The way people are able to have dreams come true. Trump was elected. We hear about him uh, telling people to go back to their countries. There is a lot of racism huh? hidden in America. The people who are at this table right now care a lot about other people. I've heard that women have led Rwanda's economy the last 10 to 20 years. They, they come with this perspective that if a woman can grow and organize the home, she can be able to lead the country. So you should come down and come to visit and see how good we are. I think we would love that. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to show you New York City here. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Okay, thank you. And then just for a completely different vibe, maybe the, the rap video is a little long, but I thought maybe the first minute just to give you a very different sense of the tonality of what portal life can look like. All right, just tell me when you want me to stop. All right, I'll, I'll tell you. So this was made by one of our partners. <laughs>
Okay, that's the Portal Life video. I will share the link to the whole. It's it's Big Zilla. He's awesome. He's one of our original curators, uh, and he led the portal in Milwaukee. Leads the portal in Milwaukee, and um, there's a huge, a big project we did with Yale and Hopkins on portals and and uh, heavily policed communities, and uh, it's called the Portals Policing Project. And let me share the video with you for those who want. And uh, and you know it's uh, it's it's cool because there's another video in Kazakhstan. Like folks have done really neat things, and it's a good good um, good point that if you can forge these deep connections between different places, um, a lot of good can come out of it. One of the teachers, uh, Kirsten or Christian Erickson at Greenwich, Connecticut, got really close to the team in Milwaukee, and Lewis came out to their school in Greenwich, and it's two communities which don't cross paths. And in some way, the portal gives an excuse and then an entry point to do so. And this is where technology is really interesting. I mean, it can be used to divide us and it can be used to obfuscate our agency. Um, but uh, it can also be used very purposefully uh, to forge, forge these kinds of connections. And that's one thing I like about, you know, if it is in a school and it does end up taking up some space, it's kind of a makes a moment, you know, and you think of pen pal letters and how great it was in the 80s to get a letter in the mail because it was so rare, it was so hard, it was so special. We kind of lost that now. It's like, oh, you know, it's coming. How do you re-imbue it? And I think the curation, the people's critical, but then also to make a moment out of it. So that's something, uh, you know, that's something fun about the video. Okay. Um, Let me see. So, I mean, that this is sort of the this is sort of the the big picture. Everything else is the projects that we're doing, and um, and you know, and what we've done in schools. And so, with Marymount, with Don Buckley, we you know, for the past many years, we've brought portals there for a month in February, and done language classes and music collaborations and programming. I think one question someone asked was about. Um, how to focus this. And that's a great question. So when, um, I think the exact question was around um, how to focus it. So basically when we set this up in a school district, let's say, and when we are driving the programming, so a little more of the older model or the, the model we had been using for years, not driven by teachers, but more driven by, by us, we have three or four different themes. So one is around climate, obviously, we do a lot with the UN, where we will have a series of engaging with climate stakeholders, activists, innovators um, around the world. And it'll be basically six or 12 sessions that we'll deliver that are with people we know in our network. Um, we have about 250 presenters in our network who are, you know, fantastic and fascinating people. And um, so climate is one, migration and home is another. Um, you know, we have portals all over the world, but if a lot of our communities, portals are in displaced communities. Um, and so we do work with UNICEF and others. So you can, you know, students can engage pretty compelling conversations around that. The next one is that we do a lot of programming around is innovation, especially with a focus on gender. So, but in innovation more broadly. So really fascinating people solving local challenges in unique ways. And those are three of the big sort of buckets of the programming that we do. Uh, and then we can work with a school or with a school district to create programming around themes that matter to that school. And that's how we build out our kind of catalog of programming, because our strength is now we have curators, you know, about 100 people around the world who, when we pick up a topic, uh, we can reach out to all of them and say, hey, do you have ideas on who you could bring in? And this could be really hard for an individual school to do. To, to, do because you're really relying on your network. Uh, but with portals, we can rely on our partner network around the world and reach into Gaza or Yangon um, and, and pull something together. No, I think, I think, um, oops, sorry. Um, I, I think that, you know, in terms of reaching out in next steps, it would be great to hear from any of you who are interested. Uh, I can send, we have much more detail about how we work with K through 12 and sort of what that looks like and the different options of what exists in the past. And I, and I say that not in a bad way, it's still the core of what we do. Um, but then those of you who are interested in maybe helping us 
think through what a model could be to reach a different scale. Because right now we're relatively expensive. Um, we'd love to have that conversation too. And uh, our vision is that, you know, there's a global classroom in every school and that it is, you know, like study hall and that it's programmed in a compelling way. And um, so if you email me, maybe I'll pull together a little glow group or, or whatever makes the most sense. And thank you to Bill, Lucy, and Julene already for all the, the connections and introductions. Um, as we come out of COVID and we've re-embraced this vision and this idea, uh, it's a new moment for us. And we're really excited to, um, you know, to build something that shapes schools in a way that really opens up people's imaginations and creates the kinds of connections that really are best in person. And when you can't do in person, this is sort of the next best or it's a gateway. And that's what we're hoping to, uh, to achieve and to achieve at scale. And I think schools, libraries, uh, public set situations and school districts, these are the perfect partners for this because obviously it's the next generation that we want to address here. So yeah, a global classroom in every school, that is exactly what we're hoping to do. Omar, thanks so much. This has been, I think, just unbelievably inspiring for people. And I think, you know, everyone's minds are, are buzzing about this. And um, so just, just really great. Peggy, we, we uh, texted Don to see if he could join, but I think he's uh, been unable to do that. But I'm sure um, that, you know, you can, you can set up a chat with him at some point. But thank you so much. Just, we really appreciate this, um, your, your time and your work. This is clearly a work of, of more than just um, going through the motions. This is a passion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely easier motions to go through than setting up containers all over the world would you know. <laughs> I think we can all feel the incredible passion that you bring to this and the passion for connecting people as as humans this is you know that's the beauty of this is kind of discovering that shared humanity again so thank you so much for that that of work of course thank you um, it's we, been amazing thank you we just wanted to remind everyone the session has been recorded and you can watch it. It will be in the replay tab if you want to watch it again, if you miss something or want to go back over it. And the replay tab in Hop In, it will also be available on our YouTube channel. You can use this link um, to get to that, um, that channel. Please tell us what you thought about this session. Um, we'll be sharing this, of course, with Amar and, and um, hope that... Um, you can, you can really just um, let him know all the things that you're thinking. And we, we would just are really grateful again for this. It's just, you know, my mind is just. <laughs> I know. Blown by it. Me too. And then um, we'd like to invite people to join our global community. Um, the Action Motivations uh, global community is, is available for people interested in education, interested in this kind of outreach. And so you can use this link to join. Amar, thanks again so much. Just really beautiful work. Thank you both. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. See you in the conference.